from a 285 km canal being carved through the deserts of Afghanistan, to Mexico building Latin America's tallest skyscraper, to Europe building a massive new NATO stronghold in Romania to defend itself from possible Russian invasion. Nations across the world are pushing construction and engineering to the extreme. Hey, I'm Luis, this is Megabuilds, and today we're exploring 10 of the world's biggest construction mega projects in 10 different countries. Let's start with the canal in Afghanistan, now on track to becoming one of Central Asia's largest. After the Taliban seized power in 2021, international donors stopped sending money to Afghanistan almost overnight. This caused the economy to collapse. Shops emptied, prices soared and food shortages became a major problem. Desperate and isolated, the Taliban began constructing mega-projects to create jobs, generate revenue and grow their own food. One of their boldest is a plan to build a 285 km canal by diverting vast amounts of water from the Amu Darya, Central Asia's second longest river. And it's not just a little bit of water that they are diverting. They plan to divert between 10 to 12 times the average flow of the River Thames. When finished, the canal will run from the Kelda district in the north to Ankoy, near the Turkmenistan border. And it will create an estimated 550,000 hectares of agricultural land, almost twice the size as the whole country of Luxembourg. If all goes well, this land will be able to produce more than a million tons of wheat every year. Food Afghanistan desperately needs. But from the start, this project has been a high-stakes gamble. The canal runs through northern Afghanistan, where the Taliban faces attacks from rival militias. Diverting water from the Amu Darya also risks sparking tensions with neighbors like Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, who share the river. And experts warn that the Taliban lacks the technical know-how and modern equipment to pull off such a complex project. Satellite images have confirmed these suspicions. They show the Taliban using outdated Soviet-era excavation methods to construct the canal, and that these caused the walls in the northern section of the canal to collapse, accidentally creating a 9km lake. But despite these issues and a total cost of only 684 million, the Taliban are still pushing ahead. Phase 1 was completed in 2023, Phase 2 was already around 80% complete by 2024 and the entire canal is now scheduled to be operational by 2026. Almost 7000 kilometers away by plane, the Kingdom of Morocco is tackling its own massive mega project. Let's take a look at the Douglas Seaport costing 1.2 billion dollars. A 1,650 hectare state-of-the-art marine complex rising in the disputed Western Sahara, a region Morocco has controlled since 1975. When finished, it will be among the biggest ports in North Africa and will handle 35 million tons of cargo per year. Dakla is part of a bigger vision to turn Morocco into the main gateway between Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa by linking landlocked nations like Mali, Chad and Mauritania to the Atlantic. If it works, the project could potentially generate more than $3 billion in trade and create over 150,000 jobs by 2035. Morocco also plans to make Dakla one of the few megaports in the world that will be powered entirely by renewable energy from nearby solar farms. But this project also comes with baggage. Since 2020, pro-independence groups have been fighting back against Morocco's presence in their homeland, even firing rockets into the city of Smara. The UN and EU also insist that Morocco has no legal right to run trade in the Western Sahara. But that hasn't stopped the kingdom from continuing construction. According to latest estimates, the port is slated to open in 2028 and reach full operations the following year. Now, let's go to Romania for the MK airbase. Just 400 kilometers from Russian-occupied Crimea, an old Soviet airbase is being converted into NATO's biggest in Europe. Expansion plans began years ago, but construction started accelerating in 2022, shortly after Russia invaded Ukraine. Since then, crews have been working hard to transform this old complex into a modern base that will be able to accommodate 10,000 NATO and Romanian forces. US Army engineers have been heavily involved with various projects on the base. And NATO allies such as the UK, Germany, Italy and Canada have already sent fighter units to this base to support the Romanian Air Force. 
But here's the thing, Romania is paying for all of it themselves. They're pouring more than 2.5 billion dollars into MK and putting themselves at risk. Russian Senator Andrei Klimov warned that if Russia ever decided to strike NATO, MK would be one of the first targets, because of how close it is to Russia's borders. So why would Romania do this? Analysts say they're playing the long game. They're betting that by turning MK into a NATO hub on the Black Sea, Bucharest will secure stronger NATO protection against Russian aggression. The first runway is scheduled to open in 2027, opening the door for preliminary NATO flight operations. Now, let's hop over to Indonesia for the Bali Urban Subway, a $20 billion project. And before we show you how they are building the subway in a highly active earthquake zone right next to a volcano, quick thanks to CyberGhost VPN for supporting the channel. By now, you probably heard us talk about VPNs. I've been using CyberGhost for over a year now, and honestly, it just works. Whether I'm working on videos at home or while traveling, I like knowing that my data isn't being tracked or sold. CyberGhost has over 38 million users and an excellent rating on Trustpilot. What I really like is that you can use CyberGhost on up to 7 devices at the same time. So I've got it on my laptop and my phone, but you could even share it with family and friends. And it also lets me watch content that might normally be blocked where I live. Overall, it's just really simple to use. You can either pick from over 100 countries yourself or just let it choose the best location for you. Then you just hit this button and that's it. This way all your traffic is encrypted and rerouted through their secure servers, so no one can see your activity. You also get 40% more content from your streaming platform and even better deals online. Right now you can get 84% off plus 4 whole months for free and they have a 45 day money back guarantee. So you can literally just try it and see if you like it or not. Check them out at cyberghostvpn.com slash megabills or use our link in the description. Okay, and now back to Bali. Traffic in Bali has reached crisis levels in recent years. The island's narrow roads were not built for the 16 million tourists who flock here every year. What should be a short drive can end up taking several hours during gridlock. So in 2024, President Joko Widodo unveiled a plan to build Bali's first underground metro, the only subway in Indonesia outside Jakarta. When finished, the 60km line will link Ngura Ray International Airport with Bali's top destinations, like Seminyak, Changu and Nusa Dua. But achieving this goal involves overcoming some serious engineering challenges. Bali sits on one of the world's most seismically active regions, known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, where strong earthquakes are a frequent event. And Mount Agung, the island's highest risk volcano, is just 60 kilometers from planned routes. No official engineering plans have been released yet, but it's likely the Bali subway will tackle these challenges the same way Jakarta Metro did, by building the tunnels with flexible joints between the concrete segments. These absorb the shock during an earthquake and allow the structure to bend when the ground is shaking, rather than crack. But there are also other problems to deal with. The project's main contractor is the state-owned China Railway Construction Corporation raising fears that the Bali subway could repeat the disaster of their last project, the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail. Back in 2023, the Jakarta Bandung subway went wildly over budget, and the Indonesian government had to pay an additional 1.2 billion dollars. For its part, the Indonesian government sees the new subway as a game changer that will cut down on pollution and ease traffic congestion on the island, and are planning on opening the first phase of the subway in 2028. Now let's go to Turkey for the Grand Istanbul Tunnel, a 3.5 billion dollar mega project. Traffic in Bali may be bad, but in Istanbul it's legendary. In 2024, the city was ranked the most congested in the world. Drivers lost an average of 105 hours a year on the road. The bridges and tunnels that cross Bosphorus, the narrow passage of water dividing Istanbul's European and Asian sites, are the worst bottlenecks. President Erdogan's solution? Building the world's first ever three-level underwater tunnel under the Bosphorus. Two levels for cars that will carry 120,000 vehicles a day and cut crossing times to less than half the time. And a third level for a metro that will move 1.3 million passengers per day that will link to a wider network that can move up to 6.5 million people daily. 
Government officials say the Finnish tunnel will also become a global transportation hub that will link two continents and attract foreign investment. But the engineering hurdles are huge. The tunnel sits 110 meters below sea level, where water pressure reaches 11 bars. That's about the same as 70 cars stacked on top of each other. And it runs right next to the Marmara Fault, where magnitude 5 earthquakes occur roughly every five years. The Grand Istanbul Tunnel fits a familiar pattern of headline-grabbing Erdogan mega-projects. From Canal Istanbul to Istanbul Airport and the new Presidential Palace. All are extremely ambitious projects that have been accused of corruption, overspending and environmental damage. Still, Erdogan's government is pushing ahead with construction. Because for them, this isn't just about easing traffic. It's part of a broader vision to elevate Turkey's standing on the world stage. Latest estimates by the Turkish Transport and Infrastructure Minister predict the Grand Istanbul Tunnel will open in 2028. But not all mega-projects go as planned. Let's take a look at the new capital in Equatorial Guinea. Launched by President Obiang in 2011, during the country's oil boom, this city was meant to replace the old capital Malabo, situated on Bioko Island about 160 kilometers off the mainland. Bioko Island wasn't exactly safe. Attacks by pirates, foreign mercenaries and rebels coming from the sea were a serious threat. So Obiang decided to create a new capital deep in the rainforests of the mainland, which would be more protected and closer to the country's population centers. Today it covers an area of around 8000 hectares, about the size of Manhattan in New York, and includes shiny new buildings, luxury hotels and wide boulevards designed for 200,000 people. But here's the problem. The project costs around 600 million dollars, nearly half of the government's entire budget, in a country where about 70% of people live in poverty. So when the oil boom crashed, Equatorial Guinea ran out of the funds to complete construction. Now, more than 15 years later, the new capital remains unfinished and is home to only about 2000 people. Many visitors describe it as a ghost city. Most of the luxury buildings are empty, the boulevards are silent. And despite a few ministries relocating here, most government offices still run out of Malabo. Construction is still ongoing, but these days the new capital is seen by many as one of Africa's white elephant projects and more of a burden than an asset. One project that definitely looks set to finish on time is Mexico's Toro Rise. Construction of this high-rise began in 2022 in Monterrey, northeastern Mexico. When complete, it will soar 475 meters above the city, more than 145 meters higher than the Eiffel Tower, and become Latin America's tallest skyscraper. Developers, Poses Design Group, are also promoting Toro Rise as a model of sustainable engineering. They say it's built with low-carbon concrete to cut emissions, and their aim is to earn the highest environmental certification in Mexico. But beyond the hype, there's another story. Towers like Toro Rise only began appearing after rising tensions between the US and China pushed American businesses to relocate to Mexico. This shift sparked a nationwide boom and caused a spike in demand for premium real estate, especially in Monterrey. The downside? Thousands of ordinary Mexicans in the city are now struggling to find affordable housing. Meanwhile, developers are building more towers, specifically targeting the ultra-wealthy, like the Toro Rise. Units here are expected to sell for up to $790,000, nearly 47 times the average Mexican household's annual income. But now, let's hop over to Estonia for a different type of mega-project. Rail Baltica for $17 billion. This new 900km rail corridor will link Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania to Western Europe's high-speed train network for the first time. Trains will run at 249km per hour, cutting down travel times from Estonia's capital Tallinn and Lithuania's capital Vilnius from 11 hours to just 3.5 hours. Other key stations will include Pernu in southern Estonia, Riga Central Station in Latvia and Kaunas in central Lithuania. Once fully operational, this rail network will be able to handle 5 million passengers a year. And that's expandable to almost 17 million passengers by 2045, which would make it the second largest international high-speed rail service in Europe after the famous Eurostar. 
Unlike the old Baltic railway system that ran on old Soviet-built tracks that pointed east towards Moscow, this new railway will cut Estonia's dependence on Russian rail tracks. That means no more slow border transfers, just direct integration into Europe's economy. And all trains will run on renewable electricity and dramatically lower carbon emissions compared to conventional rail systems. But not everyone is convinced. Local NGOs say demand for Rail Baltica has been overestimated. And environmental groups warn that despite the green branding of Rail Baltica, protected forest areas are being torn down to make way for construction. Still, none of this is slowing the project down. Because since Russia's 2022 invasion of Ukraine, Rail Baltica has also become a NATO military corridor to move tanks, troops and supplies across the Baltic. So payments from the EU keep coming in and the first phase of Rail Baltica is expected to be fully operational by 2030. Now let's head south to the African nation of Angola, where we find the Kakulo Kabasa power station, a 4.5 billion dollar mega project that could transform the lives of millions of people. The new station is being built alongside the Kakulo Kabasa dam on the banks of the mighty Kwanza river. This dam is 103 meters high and holds back about 440 million cubic meters of water. That's enough to flood Manhattan Central Park three times over with a depth of 43 meters. But the real story is the power plant. When finished, it will house four 530 megawatts Francis turbines, plus a smaller environmental flow turbine, capable of generating an estimated 8,500 gigawatt hours per year. That's enough to power more than 2 million average European households. Currently, only 47% of Angolans have access to reliable electricity, which is why the Kakulu Kabasa Dam could be a real game changer once it's operational. But here's the catch. The Kakulu Kabasa Dam is being built and financed by China, through the Gazuba Group and loans from Chinese state banks. Angola has agreed to repay these loans in oil. A risky move because of the volatile global market and the fact that the country already owes Beijing more than 8 billion dollars in oil-backed debt. Leaked emails also revealed that Isabel dos Santos, daughter of Angola's former president, secretly held a stake in the Kakulu Kabasa contract. This stalled work on the project for two years, until a new government revived it and set a new completion date for 2026. Alright, we've seen some incredible mega projects so far. But the last one is on another level, not just in vision, but in how much it has divided a nation. Meet the Central Transportation Hub in Poland, or CPK, a 31 billion dollar mega airport and high-speed rail network rolled into one. The airport will be able to handle up to 40 million passengers a year by 2032. In the long run, it's designed to expand to accommodate up to 100 million passengers. That's more than London's Heathrow. And rail lines will be able to move more than 130 million people a year, more than France's entire TGV rail system. Trains will travel at 350 km per hour, cutting the journey between Warsaw and Łódź in central Poland from almost 2 hours to just 40 minutes. To achieve this, engineers will bore a 4.6 km tunnel, the longest in the country, deep beneath some of the country's busiest urban areas. And that's not all. CPK is also built to serve NATO during emergencies, with heavy-duty bridges and infrastructure designed to transport heavy equipment. Once complete, it will be able to handle military planes and troops to defend Poland and its allies across Eastern Europe. But all this ambition has come at a cost. 88% of residents voted against CPK because it would mean losing their homes without adequate compensation. Then in 2022 came the reports of overspending, when the budget ballooned to more than 43 billion dollars. The scandal pushed the new administration elected in 2023 to launch a full review of the CPK. But after billions had already been spent, cancelling the CPK wasn't an option. So instead, they tightened the budget and brought in new management to supervise the project. Today, CPK is still moving forward and set to open by 2032. So, what do you think about these groundbreaking new projects? Which did you find most impressive? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to try CyberGhost VPN, use our link for 84% off and 4 whole months for free. You can use CyberGhost on up to 7 devices at the same time and share it with family and friends.
Thank you for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.